it's Jim of Animated Educated, and today we have a special guest, Honey White, who is a uh, animator, an author, and an educator. And he's just written a new book called The Animation Masterclass. This looks like a big book. This is like all right. And there's lots of oh, there's eight hundred and eight pages. Nice. And it took me eight months to do it. Wow. Eight months. Pulling my hair out doing it and, and hundreds of illustrations and they took me forever, but I thought it was worth it. And I think it's my best book ever. I know you're heavily influenced by Richard Williams. Can you tell us what that experience was like? Three-time Oscar winner Richard Williams, uh, who I apprentice with, he had the vision um, in his studio in London where we were to bring over all these retired greats from Hollywood while they were old men and he brought over you know people like Art Babbitt who was one of the great who's the 10th old man of Disney animation animation but he was fired for leading the strike so they wrote him out of Disney history but he was really a 10th old man of Disney he came over and taught us uh he brought Ken Harris over from Warner Brothers not well he was working at Warner Brothers but he was retired and too old to be employed anymore but he was as sharp as a button and he was just as talented as ever and he came over and, and Richard Williams asked me to apprentice with him for two summers to pick his brains on Warner Brothers animation and then share it to the rest of the studio and 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 Dick Williams was great like that he brought all these old guys these veterans to London uh, to teach us how to get better, because he always said the British, and it wasn't just British in the London studio, but mainly British. He said the British are best at design, best at storytelling, best at everything, except they don't know how to animate. And uh, so I want to bring the best from Hollywood to teach you guys how to animate. And that was such vision. And it's unfortunate the way that um, his direction went because of certain issues that he never really made the movie he wanted to make and we never got to shine because his whole purpose was to get us so good we would be i wouldn't say the new disney but we would be the new entity that could make incredible movies uh but in europe in european style and everything and it never quite happened but he had the vision to bring the people who knew while they were still alive to come and teach us and uh, it's a long answer and my answers are always long but today there's nobody who wants to do that anymore uh you had a studio in uk what was the name of it it's animus productions i left richard williams initially on my own to set up animus and then uh my friend and then partner richard burdett he came afterwards and we ran it basically for 20 years and uh, did mainly commercials, but always, always with the objective of doing movies. And I must have invested a couple of hundred thousand in trying to get movies off the ground and just could never do it. In, the UK wasn't interested in animated movies. They always saw animation as cartoons. And yes, of course it is in many instances, but it's not not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do much. I wouldn't say adult movies because that gives the wrong connotation too, but I wanted to do more intelligent movies. And and I think, you know, that is what Cartoon Saloon does. And a lot of European filmmakers do. They make more intelligent and innovative and different kinds of animation that's still successful, still makes money, doesn't make as much as blockbusters, but then Hollywood doesn't make that much out of blockbusters. You know, one in 10 succeeds. The rest of them lose hundreds of millions of dollars. What What's inside this book? What are students going to get out of this? It's 48 classes, master classes. And it's made in, it's, it's structured in four sections. And the first section teaches the core principles of movement using traditional techniques the book teaches it from pencil and paper techniques, but in my live classes since I've done the book, I now do digital drawing techniques with a software called Rough Animator, which is very, very cheap, and it's really good for traditional hand-drawn approaches. And then the second, and that's 12 classes, and then the second section teaches more principles of movement, 
but this is with rigged 2D characters, in other words, in Moho, in Moho software. So we rig the characters and um, and animate the principles. It's it's much faster to do it that way. And then once, and then halfway through, I switched to section three and other 12 classes, which is all pre-production of making a film. The idea being first half of the book teaches you how to be an animator. The second half of the book says, okay, you want to, do you want to make a film? This is what you do for the pre-production. So 12 classes on that. And then, hey, now you've done the pre-production. Let's do the production. Let's get your animation really good. Let's make you film. So in theory, a person can pick up the book knowing nothing about animation, work through the whole book and come out having made their own first animated film, short film. I'm not talking about movies. Although the principle of pre-production and production apply whether you're making a 30-second commercial or you know a, a one and a half hour mo movie you know that the, the system or the processes are exactly the same and yeah it's it's like 50 years of my experience plus um all thrown into how can i best teach this for somebody picking up for the first time who really wants to know uh animation movement it's not teaching software even though i use moho in the book i don't teach moho right teaching software is always hard because it's always changing i was wondering what's the comparison with your book uh with uh, richard williams uh animation survival kit i find uh being objective about it as a teacher of animation that book is way too advanced for students way too advanced for students it's the animator's bible i would say number one book for animators anywhere is the survival kit you've really got to know how to animate to really appreciate what's in that book and the subtle inflections that dick puts into all the things uh being communicated in that book but to a beginner a student who's just trying to do a little you know simple bouncing ball it's it's total i mean and seeing everything else and it's just it, it it freezes them and it scares them and yeah they'll try but then they'll read a bit and they don't get it quite right and then they'll read another bit and they try to think oh i've got to be i've got to be able to do all that stuff and it's scary for a student just starting out so i always see my books as not replacing the survival kit but as a bridge to take students from where they are to the survival kit to get them ready to really appreciate what that book is and when I did my first book in 1978, um, The Animator's Workbook, it's still my best-selling book ever. And I'm still known for that book rather than anything else I ever did. When I first did that, I had my studio in London and I was making um, a PBS special called Cathedral. And it wasn't really my production, but I got hired by some producers over here in the states to to make it for pbs and uh we had about 70 people working we never made a, a dollar in profit because i this was my thing about wanting to make a movie i i wanted to get beyond a 30 second commercial i wanted to make something that had a story i didn't write it 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 wasn't a great story it was an educational drama documentary kind of thing uh, the building of a 13th century cathedral and the building of the Great Pyramid. And with the pyramid, I didn't agree whatsoever in what it was saying, how the pyramids were built. I didn't believe it. The National Endowment for the Humanities, they fund it. Uh, they fund a lot of it anyway. For them to approve it, it's government money. Uh, to approve anything, they have to have a number of experts in the field to agree to the script okay so that immediately knocks any creativeness out of the script all right in terms of the pyramid they got all these experts in none of which could ever agree with each other how the pyramid was built nobody really knows still now nobody really knows how the great pyramid any of the the big pyramids were built so they agreed on something they couldn't disagree with and we made that film you know and I'm not knocking PBS. I'm not knocking anything. I'm just saying that was the system. And we made that film. So it wasn't creatively, artistically anything, but I wanted to do it for the experience of hiring a, a big team. And we had nine months production schedule on it for about 26, 28 minutes long. So everyone did it. 
and a number of the people just painting cells and and different areas saying i really want to be an animator could you teach teach me how to animate and i got enough of them and i said i'll tell you what i'll do every friday morning we'll close the studio down for a few hours and i'll do a lecture and you go away and do the assignments in your spare time and come back next week i'll review the work and i'll give you another lecture and that went on for many months and at the end of it and, and sorry, I typed up all my lecture notes and I handed out photocopies of them to everyone that attended every week. And at the end of towards the end of it, somebody said to me, you know, you've got a book here. And I said, what do you mean? He said, all these notes, nobody's got that. There's nothing like it out there. You should publish this. And I thought, oh, OK, no plan to do it. But OK. So I contacted an English agent and he said, sure, I'll give it a shot for you. And he wrote to Watson Guptill, the art publisher in New York, and they said, we love it. We love it. Yeah, just tell Tony, send us the, the manuscript, get a big box, put all his, any drawings he wants in the book, any clips of film, just package it all. We'll do it all and, and we'll have a book out of it. So signed the contract, packed everything away, shipped it off. And then when, a year later, maybe the book came out and I loved it. I they did a wonderful job of it and, and everything. And that was making a book at that time. OK. This current book or anybody else's, I'm sure, current book is you contact. I've got a track record with them. So I said, hey, uh, how about this for a book? And they say, yeah, great. OK. And then basically what you have to do is you have to write the manuscript the same way, more or less. You, you write it and... Um, but then you have to provide all the images and cross-reference them, uh, adjust them all to, um, um, what's it, CMYK, CYMK, I never, whatever it is, the publishing format, scale them to a certain size. And I and this book has got hundreds of them. So I had to do all that and shipped it off. Um, then I, they they subcontracted a company somewhere that did the book design. And I didn't envy anyone doing the book design because there was so much in it. There's 808 pages in the book published now uh, with hundreds of illustrations and everything. I didn't envy them that at all. And, and, but I had to be on call all the time, backwards and forwards, checking PDFs, checking this, adjusting that supplying different images and, and and it went on for months backwards and forwards and then finally it arrived and finally it was approved and i thought okay all i got to do now is wait and they're gonna you know and i said hey we can you do some promotion for me can we do some book signings can we do this and they said oh well we don't really do that anymore and oh and uh and then a few weeks ago, I got, and I'm not singling out my publisher because I know they all do this, the corporate ones. They just sent me a whole list of if you're going to do any book signings and if you're going to go to any festivals, we've got a backup. We can make sure the books are there. And, and, and that's essentially it. But they don't reach out. They don't do publicity. They don't do press. They don't do anything. So when I say I, there's not much I can do, I'm stuck here in Seattle, uh, limited funding. I can't afford to fly here. I can't even go down to Burbank, you know. When we went to CNTX where we met and I went several times and did lectures there and everything, we road tripped it. We didn't fly it because we had so much. We had a booth and we had so much to take with us. We rented a van and put it all in a van and road tripped it there and back. So you've written this new book. And uh, if you're an animation student, where how how can you find this new book? Well, the best thing is to go to the publisher. And there, I think there are three publishing routes to the same corporate publisher. Um, the book is actually published by CRC on here, Press on here. I also know them as Taylor and Francis or Routledge. So go online, look up any one of those publishers, look up my title, and you can get it there. And then if you're really stuck, you'll probably find it online somewhere. If you just search online, you'll find someone selling it online. I know it's available. So if if people want to find out more about you or your work, uh, how can they contact you or see some of your work? Well, they can go to ArtStation and you'll find me under the tag name Tony Mation. So go to ArtStation.com. 
And there you'll find pretty much everything about me, except I haven't updated it in relation to this new book yet or any of the legacy projects I'm doing. But you'll see a lot of my a lot of my bio, a lot of my past work, my illustrations, books I self-published as well, apart from my animation books. And it's all there. And do you have an online school as well? Yeah, it's called the 2D Academy. And that is 2dacademy.com. Well, I want to thank you for coming on Anime Educated and and just, you know, telling us about the book. And, and, and uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to start looking for it. <laughs> okay, thanks. And, uh, and, I, and I really enjoyed our chat. I like the conversational way of talking. Yeah, we, good chat. Good chat. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Tony White, the author of the new Animation Masterclass book. You can check that out right here. Um, he also made this book too famous this was the animators uh workbook which uh is still around and uh you can find that too they're both really good books so uh anyway i hope you enjoyed that and if you did you can subscribe by pushing that button right there and you can also scroll down to all the videos and see other interviews or you can look at these two videos here and i'll see you next time on animated educated <laughs>